Hello, 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 and welcome to episode two of AI for Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Christopher Lang, and I'm here with my longtime business partner, friend, and your other host, Ivan Lee Jackson. Together, we own and operate a generative AI startup called Optimize AI, and our mission is to break down the complex world of AI and make it simple and easy to understand for any entrepreneur or small business owner. Today, our main topic's all about AI tools and technology that are available right now that you can use, but before we get into that, Ivan's going to kick us off with Last Week in AI. So, hello, hello, hello. Last Week in AI. All right, so this is this is an interesting one. Um, did you see the, the news article about a company is training an AI, but they're doing it as a baby, right? So, they have, like, this little infant, they have, like, the whole little baby face. The baby's, like, you know, in the computer and... Um, they're training an AI behind it, and it it, it, it kind of freaked me out. I'm not gonna lie; it was really weird, like just seeing like <laughs> the the actual connection and the visualization of a baby, but then it's like an AI baby. It it just seemed really really weird. And plus, I just saw this movie Poor, Poor Things yesterday. I don't know if you saw Poor Things, but no, um, no. How was it? It it too was really weird. It was really good. It was, <laughs> Fair, it was, it was, you know, it, it, it won a couple Oscars and um, got a lot of rewards. So I figured I'll check it out. It's kind of like Frankenstein in a weird way. Um, all right, I, I don't all right. Give too much away, but it, it, it if you've seen poor things and then you see you know you see this news article, it kind of connects, and it to me was really weird, but. Like, I don't need the whole Fair baby. Enough. I'll have to check it I out. I don't, I don't. I don't need the whole like actual visualization of the baby. Like it just felt really weird. Like what, what were your thoughts? Uh, so, so I actually, well, well, yes, I do believe because um, I, I wonder. I'll, I'll try to put a picture of that up on the screen. But what uh, for those that don't know, it's the purpose and the premise of it is to find a new way to create an AGI. And the premise between for this data scientist or this guy who or company who's doing it <clears throat> was rather than trying to feed an AI a lot and a ton of different data like you would and some any of the other models like uh, ChatGPT, like OpenAI does and every other model is doing rather than feeding it data, human data, like adult level data. The concept is to train this artificial intelligence to basically have a consciousness the same way a human being learns. So from birth and letting it grow, letting it explore the world. So this AI also has access to see through a webcam and hear through the microphone. So it experiences the world the same way a baby would. Uh, but where it gets really creepy, like you said, is where it's the physical face of the baby looking around the screen. Uh, I'm definitely going to make sure that I throw up uh, a little screenshot of that. <clears throat> on here but yeah I, I definitely agree it is it is a little bit creepy from that standpoint but i do think the premise behind it uh i think the premise behind having uh you know training an ai as you would a normal human being and really when you're trying to achieve agi is something that hasn't been done before so i'm really really curious to see how this experiment's going to turn out yeah see i'm a little I'm I'm a little hesitant even just with that whole entire concept, right? Like, I love AI in terms of being able to use it for ourselves. I get it. Robots are coming. AI robots are coming, right? But I don't know. That, that to me that 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 feels a little Terminator ish, <laughs> you know? Like I, I don't I don't I don't I'm a little hesitant in terms of just you know empowering physical forms or you know giving AI consciousness in that sense. Like, you get what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. I understand, like, you know, research and, and you know, pushing to understand, like, what's possible. But, yeah, I, I just get real skeptic when, you know, the AI starts getting, when, when they're pushing, like, you know, that type of stuff. Like, I don't need, I don't need consciousness in terms of me using it for myself to better myself entrepreneurially. But then again, maybe I do, right? Because if I have a conscious AI that's a better that 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 better serves its purpose in terms of what I'm right, talking about. Right, 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 exactly. Employee within itself, right? But yeah, I don't know. I I, I get real that like I, I try to think oh. about scary stuff, and that's a scary 
that's a scary concept, man. It's a scary concept. It is, like, it is. And but if you think about it, even like OpenAI, their their core goal is to create an AGI, like artificial right, general right. intelligence, which right. essentially is something that would be sentient, conscious of itself, to in order to be really generally intelligent, because you need not only the smarts, but you also need the emotional intelligence that goes along with that. And and I you know, so that everyone's trying to trying to accomplish that. That's the ultimate goal of all of these AI companies. <clears throat> I just said this particular company happens to be going ab- about it a very, very different way. So I am curious yeah, to see like who wins babies, that race. Yeah, when you have like the actual babies swimming around the screen, looking at you and moving around. Right. They might, they could have so. probably not visualized the baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was, <laughs> it was a visualization for, of the baby for me that, that kind of threw me off. So let's see what else so. do we have. Claude three. Speaking of speaking of uh, cognizance and, and presence, um, Claude three, is, which is an AI model, knew it was being tested. I, I actually read about that. Like that's a really interesting thing. So the, the guy was um, the guy fed it a long paper, and they were doing what's like called thousands a and thousands of lines in this paper, like really, really like in depth, like a War of the World style, like book. And they knew they were doing what they were doing was called a needle in the haystack. So uh, a needle in the haystack test. So they fit, they feed it like literally a book's worth of content or you know, paper in the middle somewhere. They wrote a couple lines about pizza, pizza toppings. And so they asked Claude, the AI model, um, is there anything in this long, you know, thousand word paper about uh, that, that looks out of place? And then it found it found the answer, pizza toppings. But then it said, this is kind of weird because this whole paper was about whatever the topic was about. It wasn't pizza topic, right? It was like a long thousand word paper, mm-hmm. or however long word paper about like some, you know, scientific research or whatever. And they just inserted the line, a couple of lines of words or text that were about pizza. And so Claude found those lines of text, but then discerned that it was being tested. So in this reply back, it said, you know, I found a couple lines about pizza, pizza toppings, um, but this is kind of weird because this whole paper is about whatever it was, you know, whatever it was about. Are you testing me or something along those lines? Maybe perhaps you're just testing me to see if I can actually, you know, find this topic or whatever. And so that, that right. level of awareness is, is kind of what we're and what's... talking about. No, 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 get it. Get it. Sorry, about, I cut you off. Know, finish up. Uh, our last topic, but, you know, getting scary but i guess <clears throat> well and that's the thing like it wasn't trained to do that it wasn't told it was going to be tested it was just given the prompt it was told simply find you know this is do you see something wrong with this text in that whole massive document is there something wrong with the text and it identified the one line that didn't fit in the context of everything else and flat out said basically like, are you testing me that could you know that's it this was either a joke or you're testing me those are the only reasons I see this nonsensical line existing in the text that you fed me. So it, it is getting to a whole new level of, I don't want to call it self-awareness because I, I wouldn't necessarily consider it self-awareness, but it it seems like as these models are getting smarter and smarter, they're moving in the direction of more of self-awareness. Yeah. Getting yeah, closer no, cool to that AGI. Yeah. That's, that's, that, I just think of that in terms of like the power. I'm like, I'm just like, wow, it passed that test. Right. So like I can feed yeah. I can feed this AI a whole research paper and get directly to what it is I'm I, I want I want from it. Right. Like I can have it like read it and condense it for me and get the exact sentence that I want. Kind of like, you know, last week when you were when you were working with your snowblower and oh, you right, right. the exact oil to like that that that, that your snowblower needed, but you didn't want to read the whole instruction manual, so you just uploaded the pdf to the ai the ai read through the whole thing for you in seconds and found the exact line you needed right so like and and there's it needs that intelligence it needs that awareness to be able to really do that and do that at the next level so on one hand the awareness part does kind of creep me out a little bit right like (laughs) technology and awareness mixed together especially when you put it together like on a robot or a little floating baby it's a little weird but I also understand like the, the 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 power if we can harness that right like you can literally create aware technical I mean it's a lot it's, you can do a lot with that in terms of um 
just business, just business. Like imagine. Right. Well, and if you think about it, we, a lot of times think about AI from an entrepreneur, from a small business, from a business perspective and how it could benefit us in business. But there's other sides to AI and other benefits to AI, say the medical field, uh, therapy, having someone to vent to. So having the emotional intelligence side of an AI is actually something that, sure. while we don't pay much attention to, could be very, very important and crucial in the future advancement of AI for different fields that we're not necessarily, you know, part of. See, now I can't, and I don't want to get too off topic, but now I, I, it's, it's hard for me to, like, not think military, right? Like, you can, you can control the temperament, you can control the intelligence, like, at that point, just like, just like some big company might want to create AI employees, right? Mm -hmm. Why would the military not create AI soldiers, right? And you can merge. I'm fairly uh, certain they already have them. I, I, there, there's, I, I think it was something else we were talking, we were doing, we were talking about, uh, mm -hmm. where I brought up the story about them giving, um, giving the AI basically a jet, like a in a jet with missiles and everything in a simulation but they gave it an objective to destroy target that's your core objective nothing should stop you from achieving this objective but it was doing it so well they gave it like another objective like hey don't destroy this target and it decided that the ai or that the their its instructors or the trainers the people running the simulation were getting in the way of it achieving its objective so it attacked them destroyed the home base and then went about destroying its target because it was told originally do not let anything interfere with you from achieving your main goal which is destroy target so again that was a military simulation but imagine that had been here's a real you know drone go right. destroy the target <laughs> right 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 yeah it's a little but, it's a little it's a little, it's a little scary in terms of like what, you know, when you extrapolate just how far it can go, right? Like you can use it for good. You can, you can, when you can control that temperament, you can control that awareness. You can, you can create powerful AIs that can do wonderful things, right? Like I think about it entrepreneurially. So I'm, you know, as a small business owner, I think about like all the different, like I can hire, not hire, but create AI employees, which which takes my business to the next level, right? Like if I, if I can literally have it, uh, a marketing AI that's trained in AI, you know, or trained in marketing, you know, has, you know, knows, has that awareness, understands the situation, you know, what we're trying to accomplish, can see, can see like our, our existing marketing stuff and, 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 and can hear and can just, you know, understand it, that that helps me as a business owner tremendously, right? And I don't have to like spend right. hundred thousand on, uh, you know, human marketing, paying an employee, right? Then you can extrapolate that, as, you know, to the nth level, right? You can literally build a whole corporation. It kind of goes back to what you know we mentioned yes on the on the last episode. Um, that the world's first one billion dollar company is one person, billion oh, dollar solo company billion is, dollar company, yeah, solo. Solo entrepreneur, billion dollar company is literally possible when you start taking into account the power of artificial intelligence and what you can really accomplish. I agree. And maybe not right this minute with where AI stands, but with the rapid advancement that we're Close. seeing from Close. conception to where we are now within the next couple of years, I don't think it's out of the uh, like out of the scope of, of out of the realm of reality that that could be the case. Yeah, I think we're closer than than, than we than we. Than, then we may imagine. I think we're very close because, like, even just as right now, you can do so much with it. It's it's oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. All right, I yeah, do think yeah. we strayed a little bit off topic. We're on last week in AI, and we're off uh, talking yeah. about hypotheticals. <laughs> right, what so do we got last, next? What's what's up on our uh, hit list? La last one we got voice voice impersonation AI and how how it's been used to scam democratic votes in the primaries as well you know this is election season in america shout out to our non-american listeners or viewers we have to be <laughs> out there but um yeah they were, so they were using they were using artificial intelligence to impersonate uh like uh democratic president uh joe biden and like other elected officials and we're scamming we're you know doing scam phone calls 
And, and they're just scamming in general with artificial intelligence, right? So you can, someone can literally use artificial intelligence to to mimic my voice. Then once you have that voice, right? Like, like you can use the AI to listen to this recording on this particular YouTube, right? You feed that to the AI. The AI can understand my voice. Now you can start typing and making it say what you want it, whatever you want it to say. So imagine being able to like just take my voice and then call my loved ones and and you're in full control in terms of what I'm saying to those loved ones. So for all intents and purposes, they don't necessarily know it's not me, right? They're going to, they pick up the phone and you can literally say what you want to say in my voice, right? So from a, from a safe Well, and there's been cases like that, uh, that, that are, that have actually happened where people mimicked or cloned someone's voice using AI called their loved ones and basically said, uh, they've done like, send me money. I'm in trouble. Uh, I need you to send this money. And, and family members have sent the money only to realize that, well, shit, I probably should have tried calling so-and-so before I did that. Uh, there's ones where they've call- claimed like, I have so-and-so. And if you don't send me X amount of money, we're going to kill them. And, you know, that they had like a re- using AI saying like, help me on um, blah, blah, blah. Like made it sound like they really had them in the background and they were being held hostage. So using the voice replica with AI is something that's already being done. And like you mentioned in the democratic primaries, like maybe New Hampshire, I don't remember what state it was in, but yeah, they replicated Joe Biden's voice and they had the AI doing robocalls saying, don't go vote in the primaries. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is, you know, the main election in November, you don't even need to go at, you know, recorded as Joe Biden. I don't think it had very much effect uh, I don't believe it had much effect on the way the primaries went, but just the fact that that was there, I know Joe Biden even mentioned it in his State of the Union. Yeah, no, it's it's it's, it's a lot, man. Like we're gonna have to really adapt as a as a society, as a world, in terms of um, just the way this technology is going. But you know, the more the more danger also comes more verification, more safety, right? Like it's it's it's, it's always it's always an arms race, right? So like, you know, you start. With every new capability, someone starts coming up with new ways to protect people from that capability, right? And so it's kind of Same thing, computer viruses. You find a way to plug one hole, now there's a whole brand new virus that'll do something different or even worse because the first way was patched. Exactly. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if we start having, like, AI call voice recognizers. Like, Like, the same way they can use AI to mimic someone's voice, you can also use AI to see if someone's using AI to mimic someone's voice. Right, right, right. right. Kind of like the text AI detection already that exists used the same way for the audio. Probably pop right up on your phone. Like, uh, you know, you know how you get like uh, suspected spam or suspected whatever. Mm -hmm. It'll be like suspected AI spam or something like that. Yep, yep, yep. yep. I have no doubt that that could exist if it doesn't already. may just not be publicly available. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, it, I guess like when, when, with every new technology, there's always going to be new threats. There's always going to be uh, new ways to use that technology to do harm. But on the flip side, with every new technology, there's always going to be new ways to uh, protect you from that harm. So it's always like it's like it's like offense, defense, and and as they develop the offense, defense develops. You know, it kind of Quick yeah, absolutely. So uh, is that it? Do we have anything else for last week in AI or, are we, or is that wrapping it up? That's it, man. That, that, that's last week in AI. I believe our next segment is mystery segment. Yeah, this was supposed to be a game. I remember we talked about it the other day, yeah. um, I, but I was supposed to do something for the game and I just did not have time. Um what we got going on today was uh, something I was actually going to do for my personal social media accounts. Okay. I was going to do this segment, but I figured, you know what? Content's content. Let's use it here. We're recording this first, so here's where we're going to use it. You want to go ahead and introduce it? or? All right. So for the mystery segment, we're going to do why does the content you create with AI suck? Explore the importance of crafting a well-formed prompt to get the best possible content from tools like ChatGPT. So, <laughs> I actually read that word for word. 
I know. I, I wrote that. I, I, I could tell Ivan didn't want to say that your content sucks. <laughs> I could see it in his eyes as he was reading that your content. <laughs> I, I, I wrote that one. But I, I, I mean, it's true. How many times have uh, have you, not you or I in particular, but even when we first started working with AI, how many times have you went to generate content for whatever it is, uh, be it your website, a blog, and it just sounds so generic and like an AI bot wrote it? I mean, it ultimately, at the end of the day, because so many people could do that, that content sucks. And what this segment is going to do is kind of teach you why that happens, why your content sucks, but also, and most importantly, what you can do to make that content better. Uh, and, and I know that it's a scary term, but the ultimate term that, that you would use for that is prompt engineering. And it doesn't have to be a scary term once you kind of understand what that means. Ivan, do you want to take the premise of prompt engineering? I know this is one of your favorite things to really work with. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it kind of makes me think of that example that you that we just referred to earlier regarding the military experiment where they had the jet, mm-hmm. you know, taking out these different targets in the simulation. And because the original first prompt was "stop anything that gets in your way," the 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 next prompt or, you know, few prompts down when they said, Hey, slow down, you're doing a really good job, you know, stop, you know, deviate from your plan. The AI chose to use that first prompt, right? Well, well, you telling me to deviate from my plan deviates from my original prompt, my original mission of don't let anything get in your way, destroy anything that gets in your way. Right. 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 So the power of prompting, the power of talking to your artificial intelligence, setting up the stage for what it is you wanted to accomplish, um, tr- telling it, you know, okay, this is your role and your, you know, this is, this is what you, we want you to accomplish. This is what you're good at. Um, here's some specific information that'll help you accomplish that role. That foundational prompt is so important. And, 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 you know, prompting period, right? Like what you tell the artificial intelligence to do is, is, is extremely critical in terms of like the, 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 the result that you get back. And, um, so some, something as simple as like, let's say like you're using an image generator and you say, Hey, draw me a picture of a dog running through a field. Right. Mm-hmm. The artificial intelligence is going to, is going to kind of fill in the blanks where, where, He's going to draw a picture of a dog running through a field, but it's going to kind of fill in the blanks, right? Um, All right. Is it day? Is it night? Is it sunny? Is it chasing a ball? Exactly. Exactly. Or even more taking it deeper, you can you can tell it, hey, you are a specialized artificial intelligence that draws images and and art based on this particular style, right? You can like look at Mm -hmm. uh, famous painters and say like you draw within this particular style. And then when you tell it that same thing, draw me a picture of a dog running through a field, it's going to draw that dog running through that field, but using the art style that you already pre-told it to use. So Right, do it in the style of Starry Night by Van Gogh. Exactly, exactly. I was trying to think of an example, but I'm not really an artist. So I don't really <laughs> have any, like, I, I thought Michelangelo, but I'm like, is that, you know, was he a scientist? He painted the painter, Sistine Chapel uh, up top, uh, uh all the angels right on top of the oh, ceiling. Right. right, 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 right. He was a bad But to man, take that know, same yeah, concept yeah. back to text generative AI uh, mm-hmm. uh, in blogs, content for your website, marketing content, one of the things, uh, one of the most important things that you're going to want to tell the AI while you're giving it the initial thing. So let's say I need copy from my website. Obviously, you need to tell it what your website is. So in this instance, let's say a very, very simple example. Ivan and I use this all the time just for testing because it's such a ridiculous example. So I sell bananas. I I, have, I sell bananas. I need copy for my website. But now the other thing that you want to tell it is what you, what tone of voice do you want it to be in? Because otherwise, it's going to be a very generic, dull, AI, official, formal tone of voice. But you could tell it to be happy. You could tell it to be excited. You could tell it that you want it to, what, what's the goal of this content? Like, yes, I need content for my website, but do I want this content to help me sell a product? Do I want them to draw traffic? I, and so the more information that you give to that AI, the better the content that gets generated will be. It'll be ex- like the more detailed you can be, the more detailed and exact the wording will be that you get back. Like garbage in, garbage out. 
type of scenario there. So you want to make sure that you're feeding it the most detailed data that you can. A picture, if you had an actual personal assistant or a writer that was going to be writing this content for you, you couldn't just tell them, hey, I sell bananas and I need you to write copy from my website. They're going to need more information. They're going to need to know what, what you want it to sound like. What's your brand voice? What's the purpose of this content? And they're going to need all that information in order to give you exactly what it is that you're looking for. And the same goes for the AI. Ivan, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, man, it's kind of like, I think you said it well in terms of um, just speaking directly to that artificial intelligence and, and, and thinking of it as a brand new employee. A brand new employee that doesn't really understand the context of your business, the operations of your business, the benefits of your business, right? They just came fresh off the streets, but they're ready to help. And and they can learn extremely fast, right? Because it's artificial intelligence. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 how you train it. What are you going to tell it about that context, about that role, um, about its mission? How are you going to empower it in terms of information to accomplish that mission? The more context that it understands, the the the, the better the results are going to be. Whether it's artificial intelligence or an employee, right? The more you tell that employee the better they're going to be able to do their job, right? So, like, um, yeah, it really all just comes down to, it really all just comes down to, like, what you tell it, what you tell it, like, what you tell it. Like, and, and exactly. So powerful. Exactly. Well, on the other, one of the other things that you can do is, let's say you want it to sound like you. You want to be able to draft emails. You want it to act as your assistant. And you want the wording to sound as if you yourself wrote it. What you can do is write five, six, seven paragraphs in your own tone of voice. Write it exactly the way that you would speak, exactly the way that you would write. Give it to the AI. Say, we're going to use ChatGPT in this instance. So feed that long prompt to ChatGPT. And what the instructions to ChatGPT will be is read this bit of, read the next bit of text that I'm about to send you, analyze it. And I want you from this point forward to match the tone of voice and the writing style of this text. What happens then is the AI is going to analyze that and then everything that it's going to write, it's going to match the tone of voice that you set. So now everything that it writes going forward is going to sound like you wrote it or as close to sounding like you as it possibly can be. You're always going to want to go back and you're always going to want to make some tweaks and edits to anything that AI generates to make sure that it really is factual, that it does have the right information that you want because it is AI after all. It, it's not physically you, but <clears throat> it'll sound, it'll be leaps and bounds better than you would get without any of those for the, those initial instructions. Yeah, I believe like the more prompt, the better. I, I think that first prompt is extremely powerful mm-hmm. in terms of just setting the conditions. That, like tone so, like, setter for the conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So like I um, I, whenever I start like talking to whatever AI, it's is generally like, you know, this is what your your job is. Here's all the context in terms of what you need to know to accomplish your job. Right. I, I like to I like to, to to knock out as much as I can within that first prompt, knowing that I'm gonna be able to tell it more going down the line. Right. Mm-hmm. If I can get the found it's like it's like as long as I can get that foundational prompt correct, then everything else becomes a lot easier. Right. So like I mean, I just use I, I just built an example, so I don't, I don't want to like re, redo another example. But um, yeah, whatever AI it is, whether it's like whether I'm creating images or um, you know marketing, or if I wanted to if I want to put together a marketing campaign and I'm using a brand new Chat GPT <clears throat> window, right? Like a brand new, fresh, you know, first prompt, new I'm chat. Going to tell that AI, yeah, new chat, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a lot of time like telling it, okay, you're you know you're a marketing expert. Uh, I'm going to make sure it's trained on specific marketing styles and, and methodologies and best practices that I want it to be trained on. So if you're a marketing expert that practices X, Y, Z marketing uh, best practices, and we're going to do a campaign based on those best practices in order to sell X, Y, Z. You're giving it a product. role, essentially. Yeah, I'm going to give it a role. Then I'm going to tell it more about that product. I'm going to tell it about, you know, the base, you know, the, the, what we think right now are the best selling points of that product. I'm going to have it do it. I'm, I'm going to just go, I'm going to tell as much as I can possibly tell it in terms of giving it the information, the context and what it needs to be able to do that job the most effectively. But 
at the same token, if I hire a new marketing person, a human being, same thing, right? So really, right. It, it, it all comes down to like, you know, the information that in the context and the foundation that you give your employees, whether it's AI or human, um, is going to empower them to do their job better. So when I think AI, I think, I think human. Which is kind of scary because it goes back to kind of the whole theme of <laughs> that this, right, of this right, right. That uh... is, is is AI and its awareness and you know kind of sort of being its own human in a sense. That's weird. And and I always use the the, the example in in a lot of different things that we do, but I always use the example of building a house. Uh, mm-hmm. The the content that you want generated is like decorating the inside of the house, but you can't do that until you put up the foundation, you pour the foundation, you put up the framework, you sheetrock the house, you run the power. You have to put all of the, that infrastructure together before you start putting couches in there, before you hang paintings and make it look pretty. You have to build the foundation first, which is really what you're doing when you're giving the AI, when you initially start that chat, when you give it a role, when you give it its its initial instructions, you give it all the information about what you want to generate that content for. So, 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 uh, so two tips in terms of like better prompting. Are you asking me or were you about to give them? It, it looked like you were ready to, ready to dive in on your, on your prompt tips. Do you want me to go? Uh, uh, I was asking you, but I, I, was, I was asking you. All right. Then, yeah, okay. All right. So we're going back to me. All right. We're going to go back to me. Tip number one, uh, whenever you first start any chat, like Ivan said, make sure you give the chat bot its role. You are an expert in marketing. You're an expert in website copy. You're an expert copywriter. You're an expert in development and coding, whatever it may be. Give it its role. When you follow up with that role, tell it how you want it to achieve or tell it how you want it to act, how, what you want its personality to be. You are, you, you know, the content you generate is cheerful and informative. Uh, it, you're, <clears throat> then you're going to give it its ultimate goal that you want it to accomplish. So give it its role, give it context, give it its goal, and then give it more details on how it can better accomplish that goal, if that makes sense. I think I kind of went a little brain foggy no, in the middle good. there. What do you? That, 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 that's All right. <laughs> literally what I would suggest as well. Um, and if you follow that, your content, your your end results from using AI will, in Chris's words, suck a little bit less. Yeah, garbage in, garbage out. If, if you give it garbage instructions, it's going to give you garbage content. Yeah, and that's true. Again, regardless, AI, employee, human, right? Like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta set the foundation. Right. If but, you're um, a crappy manager, you're going to have crappy employees, no matter what it is, no matter, you know, you show, you show up, you put your feet up on your desk and you sit in your office all day and you don't do anything. Your employees are going to follow suit. You yeah, know, imagine that, similar like this, to this. hiring somebody off the street, right? They might be the smartest person in the world, but if you just you know sit them down at a desk and say, go and don't really. Like, what, what am I going crazy. on? I'm like, all right. Exactly. <laughs> right. So, um, but that's that, man. So I think that takes um, us into our main topic, which is, uh, you know, how you could do all the stuff and what tools you can do all this stuff we just talked about with. It does, it does, uh, do it, does. So do we, how do we want to do this? Do we want to go one at a time and talk a little bit about each tool? Or do we want to do, here's a whole list, let's talk about, then then kind of go into each of the tools. What do you think? Um, let's give them the list and then kind of dig into the tools. So, so we put right. together a quick little list for you of, of, of some of the um, some some of the current AI tools and technologies that, if you're an entrepreneur, or small business owner, you should be looking at using right now today. Um, so I'll just start. I'll, I'll just kick it off. Yeah, yeah. ChatGPT. Yeah. Uh, if you're not familiar with ChatGPT, uh, it's the it's the one that really kind of set it all off uh, from in terms of public awareness. It's the OG. Intelligence. It's the OG. It's the OG. We also got Google Gemini, Anthropics, Claude AI. That Claude AI, if you recall, we mentioned that in the first segment last week in AI. That yep. was the particular AI that realized it was being tested. So that's that's interesting. We have Meta uh, Llama 2. Llama uh, 2. Right in the Messenger app. And optimized AI, optimized AI, shameless plug of our, of our, um, of our AI. 
for entrepreneurs. Yeah, and and some of the ones on the list that I've met that we just talked about that I've mentioned are some are free, some are free with paid plans, and others are paid straight out of the gate. Um, no, that is a lie. Only our shameless plug is paid right out of the gate, unless you catch us during a promo. Um, but a lot of them do have a, a free that lets you use lesser models that aren't going to generate as great content for free and to get access to their really, really good models like GPT-4, Gemini 1.5, Extreme, whatever they call it now, um, even Anthropics, Opus, which is there, like, that's the Opus is the specific model that was able to find that needle in the haystack and know it was being tested. Um, those ones you you have to pay to get access to, but you could try and use all of the lower models for free on all these platforms. Meta AI, if you have the messenger app, you can just go to your messenger app, um, right at the top of the messenger app in that little search bar, there's like a little circle. If you click on that circle, it's going to open up a thing called Meta AI, and it's a chat bot that you can chat with that uses Meta's Llama 2 model. And then you have Optimize AI, which basically takes the need to do all of that prompt engineering that we just talked about out of the equation, because we've pre-created tools that already have that level of detail and let you just choose from dropdowns and give specific details about your projects right then and there, what it is that you want to do, what you want it to sound like, how many paragraphs of content you want it to generate. We took away all of the need to do any of that and built it right into our tools and like Ivan mentioned earlier, uh, having different assistants to do certain jobs, we got a whole bunch of them right built right into our tool suite that can it can't they can't fully replace employees, but they can help. Uh, a lot of the lower level things that you would need someone like a marketing assistant to do, you don't need to go hire a freelancer or do hours and hours and hours of research for because it's already trained, programmed, and ready to do those tasks. So I'm gonna um, throw another one on the list: Ideagram ID. I D E. Oh, that's actually that's an interesting project. They just released version two not too long ago. We should probably talk a little bit more about that uh, next week on last week in AI. Okay. Uh, no, that's a, oh, sorry. I, I just I cut you right off in there. <laughs> I got excited no, about I'll the project. Good, uh, good. You brought it up. I'll, I'll let you talk about it. Go um, ahead. Yeah, I would definitely check out Ideagram. It's one of my favorite uh, image generator. Uh, it, it's an app you can download directly free onto onto your phone. Yeah, I D E O Gram. Yeah, I think it's Ideogram. Huh? I think it might be Ideogram. 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 I call it Ideogram. <laughs> yeah, it's Ideogram. I D E O G R A G R A M. It's a it's a free AI image generator you can download directly to your phone. It's pretty pretty cool. I've used it um, both personally and like on production sites actually, like where I created like images for some you know for website projects. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, Text Chat and images is something it does really, really well, better than any other model currently that I've seen. Uh, the text is, and the images, thats it specializes in that. Which is what I really like it for. Because when you think like actual entrepreneurship and really marketing, a lot of times you need that like text and that image. And so like Dolly, for example, which is another image generator, just doesn't do that part as well. Um, whereas an ideogram, as Chris just taught me his pronounced. Ah, there you go. Um, it does really well. So I, I, I like I like I like Ideogram. All right. So so let's talk about some of these models. Where would you um have you had a chance to use? Obviously, you've had a chance to use our tool suite. Uh, we, we won't add that into the rankings because obviously it is better. Um, but out of ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, and uh, Meta, where would you where would you rank them? Have you had a chance to work with all of them yet, or? No, I've toyed around with Meta. I've 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 not used Claude yet. Um, I'm generally, honestly, I'm generally like a Chat GPT or slash optimized AI or. I tend to use our tools more just because I'm one of those techno tech. Uh, all right, all right. Let me, let me break this down. Let me break this down. <laughs> I'm one Stages of those yours, entrepreneurs that, like, those the, the, a, a nerd, whatever, like, who loves technology, but I don't really like getting into the weeds of it, right? Like, I want to use my, I want my technology to be, like, efficient and useful in terms of what I'm trying to accomplish. So, for example, if I could do something on my laptop 
or if I can do that same task on my phone, I'd rather do that task on my phone, right? Like I want the the, the most efficient process possible in terms of me doing whatever it is that I'm trying to accomplish. So when it comes to using artificial intelligence, I'm, I'm the same way, right? Like I don't want to have to pre-prompt it. If I want to put together like a marketing plan for whatever project I'm trying to accomplish, I don't want to have to go into chat GPT or into Claude or into Facebook and pre-prompt it and teach it to be a marketing assistant. Like I don't want to do all that when I have, especially when I have like access to optimized AI where we already have a marketing AI assistant already pre-prompted. Right, like we already. I promise this is not supposed to be an ad for optimized AI. I promise. But you know, but but, but Chris, you know this. No, bring bring, come back on the screen. Come back on the screen. All right, all right, all right. I'm back. Here I am. You know this to be true, though. Like what I'm telling, what I'm trying to tell people, like this is just how I am. I'm lazy when it comes to my use of technology. I don't want to like have to like do a lot of work to get to my results. I want the most efficient process possible. So it's true. If I need a marketing, if Chris says, "Hey, we got, I, I got this idea, and I need to, put, I need you to put together a marketing plan for it," I could go to ChatGPT and go through what we just told y'all about, you know, setting up the foundational prompt and and telling it about its role and then setting the goals and training it and all that stuff. I can do all that, or I could just go open up Optimized AI, open up the marketing assistant, and say, "Hey, you know the." Mind you, optimized AI that already knows about me, knows about our businesses together. Right, so, right, so when right. I, say, hey, I need a marketing plan. It's going gonna, it's gonna to ask me for which particular business, you know, because it, it already knows. the. Like, I don't have to tell it all that. So, so for True. me, path of least resistance, a lot of time when it comes to using artificial intelligence, at least for myself in terms of what I'm trying to accomplish for right now in my life and my business, optimize AI is the most efficient tool, right? I mean, to be and fair, we literally it. built it for that reason. And we literally built it for that, <laughs> that reason. That's, that's exactly. why it exists. It was meant to be the most efficient tool, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could tell it about your business. It knows about you. Like, it knows about, like, your, like, like your different, it just, it, it's just the most efficient approach, right? So, like, for me, a lot of times, I open up something like that. There's, there's never really a reason to go, other than, like, just testing it, go opening up Claude, testing it, opening up Facebook's version, testing it but like it doesn't really help me accomplish things in life on a regular basis in the same way that optimized ai does again all right that's fair for that purpose and i've already told it about myself and it knows so much about me and my companies that by now it's just the most path of least most efficient way forward path of least resistance in terms of getting that's right now again i promise that wasn't supposed to be a shameless plug i i threw in the shameless plug by mentioning it but that's Ivan's opinion, 100% straight up, not even as the Optimize AI owner. That was just, I asked the question, how does he rank him? Um, all right, so let's take out Optimize AI. Um, where would you rank the other one? Well, I guess I guess you kind of already mentioned, you, you're ChatGPT, Gemini, you play with a little bit, but you haven't really gotten a chance to spend too much time GPT with the other ones. Because, so, you can accomplish... Some of what we accomplished with optimized AI using chat GPT, right? Being that you, you can create multiple chats. So mm-hmm. each chat, you can kind of train to be whatever, like, like, you get what I mean? Like each chat, like I can train, I can start a new chat and then chain, train that particular conversation or that chat to be a marketing assistant. Then I can start a new chat and then train that one to be a data analysis, right? So like each chat, I can kind of take and and give it a role, and it's it's it, each chat is almost like a new instance of, of of artificial intelligence, right? Like it's a new conversation, right? So, right. It, it it has a new fresh slate that you started the conversation and right. gave it its role. So this is what I used to do before, you know, before we you know built optimized AI, right? I would mm-hmm. create different roles or different AIs. I might have like. 10 different chats and each one of those chats were pre prompted to accomplish, you know, specific things. Like I had my marketing expert, I had my writing assistant, I had my, you know, I, I had multiple chats. Right. Uh, right. And I had to go through that process of like pre prompting it and telling it what it's going to do, what's going to accomplish. But just the fact that that's, that you can do that within chat GPT, 
Like, I'm not sure. Can I do that? Can I have multiple instances of conversations using Facebooks, using Llama? No, actually, uh, uh, no, no. I think it just has the single conversation. Same with Claude. Gemini, I think you can save conversations depending on where you're using it. Like if you're using it on their paid model, I believe you can save the conversations. Uh, I've never really, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know for a fact you can, because I've gone back to some. Um, Well, and one of the other things that I found uh, that uh, that's actually really helpful that for me puts chat GPT above the other ones are the custom GPTs. If you're, if you have their paid model Mm. for the, whatever $20 it is a month, because it's kind of like, instead of having to pre prompt and find that chat in their ever never ending sea of uh, AI chats that you have. You can give it instructions, you can upload some files to it, and give it more of a role that's built in, so every time you chat with it, you could start multiple chats with that same, basically, like, GPT bot that has that same kind of information that you originally gave it. So, I use those a lot more than those, like, saved, pre-prompted chats. But again, I know you need the paid version in order to have access to those. Oh, yeah, custom GPTs are pretty cool. Like, they're they're, they're like, it's almost like, you know, with the iPhone, like how, how, how having those pre-built apps that you download from the app store really is what took the iPhone to the next level, right? Like that way Apple didn't have to create all the different softwares. Apple didn't have to spend right. time creating angry birds and creating, um, angry pigeons. Oh, flappy that. wing same, ones. Same, 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 you had to fruit ninja. Flappy wing. Apple didn't have to create all those different games and all those different apps, right? Like it, they they spend their time creating the phone, creating the actual platform, right? The, the device, and then you un then you unlock the ability for the rest of the world to be able to create applications for that platform, and that mm-hmm. that's just a recipe that we've seen that encourages uh, innovation and development for your platform. And so for 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 OpenAI, ChatGPT to to do that to create that. That 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 custom GPT store where people can create their own custom AIs that are pre-prompted to accomplish a specific goal is is is, is it's pretty it's pretty pretty huge and I think that's just going to further solidify Open AI as a forerunner in that in that in that AI space. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Well, in addition to that, uh, just speaking on keeping them at the fore uh, at the forefront of the AI race. Uh, so I, we, I know we've talked about a lot of models that are either getting close to or just barely uh, beating out GPT-4 mm. in all of these different benchmark tests, which is great. You know, like it just shows that there's some competition. But the point that never really gets talked about or brought up is the fact that GPT-4 has been out for almost a year now. So these other models are just getting to the point where they're close or barely beating a model that was built a year ago. So by now, I don't know how that keeps happening. I don't know why I keep getting thumbs ups. Um, well, but but it's being, it. I have no idea. No idea. At any rate, but, 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 <laughs> but so what they're, they're barely beating out a model that that's over a year old now, or just about a year old, somewhere around that one year mark where, so very, at some point in the near future, very soon, OpenAI is going to be coming out with a uh, GPT 4.5 or a GPT 5 that's going to take those benchmarks that we're seeing people like as the like creme de la creme that you want to beat and just blow those out of the water next. They seem to be about a year ahead of all of these other, uh, other models, and now it's going to be another mass race to catch up to whatever OpenAI's next new version is. So I think yeah. that's also keeping them ahead of the game because they're setting the bar and letting everyone else catch up and then saying, guess what? Raised it. It's, it's, the other thing to think about is that like one AI may be slightly more intelligent than the, than the other AI, but how much of a difference does that make when in the overall efficiency of use of what you're trying to accomplish, right? So like for example- And I guess it, I guess that really depends on what it is you're trying to use it for. Like one may have gotten a higher score on the bar exam than the other, but mm-hmm. by how many points? And is it really going to make that big of a difference if all you're trying to do is make like a terms and conditions? 
Probably yeah, not. And can I can I train it? And can I can I can I use multiple windows and multiple instances of it? And can I, you know, there's just so much other stuff that goes into it, right? Kind of like going back to that whole optimized AI example. Like, if I have this one one AI where I can't have multiple windows, right? I can only have one conversation. I'm just thinking like Meta, mm-hmm. right? So like Meta, if you go into your messenger app, you can click the button, you can have a conversation with an AI, but you can't create multiple windows, right? So I can't, I can't really train this particular AI or I, I can't train multiple versions of that AI. I can't make like a, a, a marketing expert, a COO, uh, like, you know, multiple roles for a business. And without that ability, yeah. it could like that particular AI might be even smarter than, um, let's say, Chat GPT or OpenAI, which we use as part of like the optimized AI tool suite. But um, the functionality of what I can actually accomplish is limited based on the limited user, the limited functionality of, of just being able to have one conversation, right? So you can only have one conversation that, that that limits me. Whereas like with chat GPT, I can have multiple conversations and each one of those conversations, I can train that AI to specifically follow a specific role. And so I can have in essence, multiple roles, multiple experts, right? I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm unlimited when it comes to chat GPT in terms of how many employees or AI experts for each role I want to create. Whereas with, with Facebook's, even if it's smarter, which I'm not saying it is, it's not smarter, but even if it was smarter than ChatGPT, even if they you know, somehow got it to where it's slightly better, it would be yes, less useful to me just because I'm limited in terms of how many instances of that AI I can create. Does, does that make sense? That, that it does. It does make sense. And I think so really it, it's the user experience and what the user interface and how the user interacts with that AI that really, yeah. especially for, for us and for our audience, uh, I think that's the most important part as far as what, you know, where kind of even you'd rank the ones that are available right now, which, and again, I think chat GPT a hundred percent is taking the cake. Google's trying, it's getting really close. It, it, it has a really cool user interface. Um, you know, it's fancy, it's shiny, whereas, you know, open AI is a little more just bland and boring, but from a usability standpoint, I still think open AI and chat GPT take the cake here a hundred percent of the time. Even copilot. I like, I like copilot. Copilot has a pretty cool yeah, user interface, but it's based off of the same open AI models. It's based off of GPT four. It's just and, Microsoft and it rendering issue. of that chat bot. And it also has the same issue with, where is it's literally just a chat bot, right? It's just one chat bot where I can't really create. So I like open AI because, or I like chat GPT specifically because I can create those. I have unlimited conversations and I can, so, so, so it's like having 10 or 20 or however many AIs that I want. Right. Versus, you know, something like Copilot or something like uh, where it's just literally one conversation, one chat bot. And I feel like I'm limited in terms of what I can really accomplish. There. So I I think the the ultimate uh, consensus here, at least between the two of us, the chat GPT absolutely takes the cake on this one. Uh, as Pretty the clear much. winner, second Pretty only much. to our own optimized AI tool suite. Um, <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> well, and that's the, the other thing that gets built into the tool suite is you have the option in some of the different tools to choose which AI you want to use. So you could use OpenAI's GPT-4, or you could use Google Gemini. It's up to you. You get to actually pick and things like our content generator. So you can really kind of experience how each of them generate the content, but in a nice, friendly user interface. That was a shameless plug. <laughs> yeah, that was a good plug. And that's why, no lie, when I go to accomplish something with artificial intelligence, which I do pretty much daily, I generally just, again, path of least resistance, path of most of, of being the most efficient. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a small business owner. I'm an entrepreneur. I need to, I'm a dad, right? Like, I need to, I need to get things done. I need to get things done fast. I don't, yeah, I don't have time, have time to be training everything every time. Exactly. Hence why I generally open up optimized AI. That's not even a shameless plug. This is just like, I'm just telling y'all like how I get things done and how I get things done officially. Um, the more before that it was chat GPT. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I pre-prompted, you, you know me, I used to show you that stuff. I, I, would, mm-hmm. I would create my own custom GPT. Um, I pre-prompted to be, you know, I could 
Yeah, I pre-prompted it to you know accomplish oh, the yeah. task I wanted to use, and then I would just open it up my AI, look for that particular role, go in there and get it done. That way, it would save me time. Once we came up with optimized AI, it just you know kind of took over what I you know for what I do as an entrepreneur. Um, but all right, but, so yeah, I mean, we're changed. we're coming up on an hour, so I I want to I want to recap this. We so just models you can use right now. Regardless of our input or thoughts on them, you have ChatGPT, chat.openai.com. You have Google Gemini. I believe it's gemini.google.com. I'll make sure the links end up below in the description. Uh, you have Google's our Anthropics Claude, uh, anthropic.com slash Claude. Meta AI, which you can use in your Meta Messenger, Facebook Messenger app. Uh, and then you have your optimized AI. There is one more that I didn't bring up, but I specifically didn't bring it up because it's new. And it's something I want to talk about next week because th- th- this is something I'm going to go on a little bit of a uh, not rant on. Spence. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'm going to gonna... find out what Chris is talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So make sure you like, me, share, no subscribe, all of those things. Make sure you do that so that you, you know when our next episode comes out so that you can find out exactly what it is that I'm talking about. Uh, that's all. Do you have Ideogram. any parting words, Ivan? Oh, uh, Ideogram, just adding to that list. Oh, uh, yep. Ideogram. That's right. Ideogram. Definitely. That's on the app store. I don't think there's a yeah, website for it. I think it's just an app. Yep. In terms of just a free app that you can use to start testing like image generation, AI image generation. Uh, but yeah, man, that's it. Y'all, uh, my parting words. Thank y'all for, uh, sticking with us this long. Uh, I was a little under the weather this episode, so I promise next week I'll be a, a lot more, hopefully, a lot more co- coherent. The, the day <laughs> hey, you, ch- you toughed through it, though. You toughed through it. Should have heard Ivan before we hit record. <laughs> yeah, for real, man. I, I'm on. I'm on. I'm on a lot of day quill right now, so I don't, I'm not sure what's <laughs> if that's seeping through or not. But um, but yeah, man, this has been another week of. AI for entrepreneurs. If you're an entrepreneur and you use artificial intelligence, I hope this conversation was helpful for you. Definitely try out those different tools that we just mentioned. Um, a lot of them, like Chris mentioned earlier, are free, or you can at least start with the lo- lesser models for free. Um, if you're not using artificial intelligence as an entrepreneur, like your def- your competition is. If you're not using artificial yeah. intelligence as an entrepreneur, just understand yep. that your competition is and you don't want to get left behind. So we look forward to recording more of these episodes going into the future. Uh, that's all I really got, Chris. Yeah. Again, like, share, subscribe, do all those things. And if you do have anything, any topics you want us to talk about, any questions you want us to answer uh, next week or on a future episode, comment below. Definitely let us know what your thoughts are. Uh, we'd be more than happy. Even if you want to be on the show uh, and share your experiences, please comment below. We'd be more than happy to talk. See you next week, guys. Thank you.